I want to welcome you again, Margaret Ann Lembo here. I'm so happy and grateful to be able to offer you some insight into my book, The Essential Guide to Aromatherapy and Vibrational Healing. I'm going to be sharing some ideas on things that you can do with aromatherapy and also to get to know the book because it is very full and complete, that is for sure. So I, I wanted to show that um, the dedication. This, is, this dedication is, uh, to, of this book was to my mother, Antoinette Lembo. I, wanted, I thanked her for teaching me to be one, of, one with the flowers in the garden. Thank you for teaching me to communicate telepathically with nature. And of course, thank you for being my mother. So as a little girl, um, I was blessed to have a mother that was very connected with, a, with the garden and gardening, all kinds, plants and food, growing food, all kinds of things in the garden. And I loved being in the garden with my mother. And I feel like my original connection to all this that I do now is because of that time in the garden, the teachings of telepathy, as well as how to communicate with the plants and the trees and the bushes and such. And so evolved my particular, this book. So <clears throat> I want you to take a look at this picture where you see the um, dew drops sitting on this leaf. Now I wanted, I put that as part of the, in your imagination as part of the meditation we just did. Um, so if you're listening to this on YouTube after the fact, um, there's a meditation just prior to this called the Fragrant Garden, <coughs> excuse me, that you can listen to and connect with the garden on another level. But this is how um, the ev evolution of Bach flower essences uh, came about. Now, I wanted to bring this up because um, I'm not going to do much on Bach flower essences in this particular workshop. I've, I've talked about it in the past. And there are some you know, videos that you can watch, but it's because of Bach flower essence, which is not an essential oil, it's a flower essence, the essence of the flower, was first uncovered or discovered by Edward Bach, who was a homeopathic physician in the 1930s in England. And he knew he had to bring more to the planet and um, went on this walking journey to uncover what it was that he needed to realize so he could help more people. So it was when he woke up one day in a field, and this is my version of his experience, when he opened his eyes and saw the dew drops on the trees, on the leaves, on the bushes, on the flowers, he realized that the vibrational essence of the plant was installed in those little droplets. And from that, he created vibrational medicine, if you will, called Bach flower essences. So that's just a little bit about why I had to put that little photo in there. So in this book, I go into great detail on a lot of things. It's very com complete. So part one is about understanding the basics of, aroma, of your aromatherapy and vibrational healing practices. So that includes the, you know, how to work with essential oils, how to, the history of the use of essential oils, the physical and energetic value of essential oils, and also some really important things like uh, safety precautions. That is very important to understand that what the essential oils I'm referring to are medical grade essential oils. And there are different grades of, of oils. There's commercial grade or fragrance fragrances, and they vary on how they affect us. So, and an aroma of an essential oil that's medical grade should have an immediate effect on each and every one of us upon use. With a fragrance, it might smell good, but it's not going to have a therapeutic effect. So that's something to be aware of. And that's also an important facet of, of why you need a good aromatherapy book if you're gonna work with essential oils because that way you can look up and be sure if there are any contraindications or anything you need to know 
uh, about when you're using it. And I'll have an example page for you coming up shortly. So tonight we'll also in the, um, go into how to get in touch with the vibrational assistance of aroma energetic practices. And we are going to talk about gemstone essences tonight. There's so many things that we could be talking about, but I, I had to um, choose because we are, uh, thank you for that compliment, Lori. <laughs> Everybody, we have just so much time in this short period. So um, I just want to double check. I thought I skipped something there. In this book, there are 60 essential oils that I go into great detail. So you can see them there, one through 60, and Lang Lang being the last one, which is I happen to be all about lately because I have a Lang Lang tree. I literally have a Lang Lang tree and I literally have stood underneath that Lang Lang tree inside the branches. So probably nobody could see me if they walked by because <laughs> it, it's pretty full. So um, in the second section, which is like, like I consider the main section of the book, is where you have very detailed information for each one of the essential oils. And it's easier to see, my goodness, my fingers, Margaret Ann, pushing too fast. You, you can see it more clearly on the Lang Lang page right here, where it goes into great detail. Now, it's pretty tiny, but let me let me share with you, with each essential oil, there's going to be a key phrase or key words. And I do this in, in most of my books, and this has, and I, with the crystal book, I did the same thing. Lang Lang is love and spiritual affluence is the key phrase. That's a picture of my Lang Lang tree right there. That's not part of the book. I, I had to put a little insert so you could see what a Lang Lang flower looks like off of my tree, which I'm so love. So each one of the essential oils in the book will have, you'll have the botanical name, what note it is. So there are um, essential oils have notes, whether they're the top note, the middle note, the base note, and based on whether they are a base, middle, or top note, that has to do with blending and when you're blending and how much of an oil you might use in percentage wise when you're making the blend. That would have to be an in-person class someday in the future for me to explain that because we have to do that in person. The method of extraction, how the, how the essential oil is extracted from the, for the plant, or part of the plant is being used. So in this case, Lang Lang, it's the flowers that are used. The fragrance, and as best as I could, I did an, ex, an example of what I could do, is it's intense, it is, it's floral, it's narcotic for sure, and sweet. So when I get out of my car, on my, when I go home at night, especially at night, uh, in, especially at dusk, I'll say, the, my, my whole front yard is just filled with the fragrance of Lang Lang. I feel so grateful and blessed. And when I got that tree, it was a little stick, I'll tell you. It was just a little baby. You could hardly tell it was going to be a tree. Anyway, let me go back here. So then I'll tell you the colors that I feel are associated with that particular essential oil. Now, that is not necessarily the color of the actual plant or the flowers. It's the colors on an energetic vibrational level that are associated with that particular essential oil. So in this case, I associate it with the color pink, the color yellow, and the color white. Chakra, solar plexus, and navel, I would say heart chakra now after years of having of, of the tree. What astrological signs it's associated with, in this case, cancer, cancer, Libra, Pisces, and Scorpio, which planets, associations, Jupiter, the moon, Neptune, and Venus. The numerological association, it vibrates to the rate of eight, which animal association it aligns with, which is dove, and the element, which is water, because of the emotional vibration. Each essential oil in the book has an affirmation. What complementary flower essences would be beneficial? And uh, complementary gemstones, so which stones would work with that on an energetic level? And this will work 
this information is helpful if you do get into making gemstone essences, which I'm going to share in a little bit with you in a moment, because then you'll have some ideas on which gemstones to look to to assist in amplifying a particular blend. So a little bit about the plant. So you have the basics. What chemical components? So I got a very amazing big, big book. Actually, my husband bought it for me for Christmas one year when I was writing this book. And I pulled the, the chemical components from that book. And because I don't know that information, I'm, I'm a metaphysician and, and I'm an aromatherapist through intu using my intuitive nature as well as the training I've had. So the spiritual use, how you would use it on a spiritual level, how you would use it on a mental level, emotionally and physically. So let's note here. So the spiritual use is that Lang Lang encourages spiritual service to others. And so this would be beneficial if you want to be a, a philanthropic with your spirituality and not imposing it on others, but that you are authentically in service to others to help them um, align with higher uh, wisdom and higher knowledge. And it also is uh, connected with your guardian angels and Kuan Yin, who is the goddess of mercy and compassion. It's a great oil for meditation, which is why I had us imagine we were smelling it um, during our little meditation. The mental use is that it really helps to relax you. It is very relaxing and it calms you down, but you're still alert and attentive. And it really opens you to, to like connect with love. Love, love, and more love. On an emotional level, it can help you if you're having erratic emotions, up and down. You're happy, you're sad. And it also is great if you feel like you have an emotional block. So it's very good for self-nurturing and also as on a physical level, it's an aphrodisiac and it's beneficial in fertility blends. <coughs> so as I say here, due to the stress relieving properties, it lowers the blood pressure and helps to improve sleep patterns and reduce feelings of being overwhelmed, which I feel like many of us have that need these days. And you can see that I also indicate which professions it's associated with. So Lang Lang is a good aromatherapy ally for cardiologists, hairstylists, insomnia specialists, specialists counselors, doulas, insomnia specialists are in there twice. And I wonder if that's true in the final book. Um, this is my, e uh, you know, like the, what is it called? This is a copy from a copy of when it's a marketing copy that I took these pictures from. Uh, marriage counselors, maternity nurses, meditation facilitators, and sex therapists. So the therapeutic qualities or properties, you can see here there's quite a few here. And then there's divine guidance. So you, you can also use this book as a what I call magic book, where you open the, to a, any page in the book and when you look for the divine guidance and it will give you a message and the question that you can ask yourself is are you ready to attract the best of everything do you believe the best is yet to come make a clear decision to manifest the good now in this moment don't wait until tomorrow you are being called to experience spirituality in everyday living see all the love that is in everything I think that's a beautiful message from the Lang Lang tree, right? And so for your safety, now this part is very important, I feel, and whenever you're going to be using medical grade essential oils is to look up the, the contraindications or what I call the for your safety information and is to avoid the use in case of low blood pressure because it lowers your blood pressure. So if you already have low pre blood pressure, it can be very dangerous or I shouldn't say very dangerous. It can make you pass out and it's not good for you to lower your blood pressure lower than it's supposed to be. And uh, this is not an essential oil to use if you're pregnant or nursing. And then I always have a little bit of uh, interesting tidbits for each one of the essential oils, all 60 of them. And one of the things that I like to notice here and whatever I could find it in my research is 
where you might have might have found or smelt Lang Lang before or that or a particular flower in or I should say essential oil. So this is found, you can find it in Chanel number 19 and Dior is Miss Dior. So this is this is part of that blend for that perfume on a perfume level. So in the uh, part three of the book, which has are the appendices, which are I also find extremely important and effective because there's so much you can look up and research. And what I've done here is um, I had for years and years and years, I taught my aromatherapy courses for aromatherapy level one and level two that had to do with learning how to blend and how to work with the essential oils for blending. So I actually provide recipes for specific uses, and a lot of the formulas that are in this book are from the classes that I have taught. And I'm going to go over one of them in a little bit. And then also there's an appendix, in the appendix is a whole section on Bach flower essences that I spoke of a little bit earlier um, when we were looking at the little um, droplets, right? The vibrational essence of plants and flowers. So here's a caregiver formula right out of the book. Now, do you take care of other people? Do you take care of animals? All of us are really caregivers and many people are care, uh, caring for not only their children, but perhaps their uh, significant other or parents. And um, it can be quite intense and stressful when we have uh, an overwhelming. And so based on those factors, this caregiver formula is uh, really a wonderful aroma, but also has real therapeutic effects. So bergamot, which is a citrus, and I do want to mention that any citrus plant or citrus oil is going to have a phototoxic effect which means that you will actually have, um, if you put it on your skin, which I don't recommend much of putting it on the skin, uh, if you breathe that you inhale essential oils, that's I think the most effective way. It goes right through the limbic system of the, to the brain and communicates what it's supposed to be doing directly to the brain through the olfactory nerve. Pretty amazing and powerful how cool that works. But if you were to make something where you put it on you, that's a citrus, and bergamot is a citrus, and you see oranges in this formula too, so that's a citrus, you don't want to go out in the sun because the minute you go out in the sun and that's on your skin, it will actually burn. You either will get a real sunburn, like an intense one, or you might get a different, you know, discoloration of your skin. And so avoid that. So now on the, do you see these numbers off to the right side? That's how many drops I, I have, a, like, so that you, anybody can make this without having to buy large quantities of a given essential oil. They can use a pipette and figure out specific little drops. So eight drops of bergamot to help maintain mental clarity and good focus, because life can get confusing if you're caregiving, that's for sure frankincense to align with the spiritual nature of the person being cared for. And I feel that's really important to be a truly authentic caregiver to help a person in their life is to align with the spiritual nature. So 30 drops of frankincense, orange for joy and encouragement, 34 drops. So orange is a very uplifting scent. It is a relaxing scent, but it's uplifting in the idea of bringing more happiness and cheerfulness. Lang Lang, which I seem to be, you know, addicted to, <laughs> to maintain calm and inner peace. Three drops. Now you would think, Margaret, why not more drops of Lang Lang? Because that would overwhelm the aroma. So you, as you get to know your essential oils, Sometimes you can put too much of one particular scent of, of one of the blend, one essential oil in the blend, excuse me, and then all of a sudden all you smell is Lang Lang. You can't smell anything else. And notice with vetiver, vetiver here, just two drops. Vetiver is very viscous. It's a very 
thick essential oil. And it's really good as a base for stabilizing the scent because essential oils are volatile. And uh, you, when you smell them, uh, you, it, goes, it goes away so quickly that you're like, where did that aroma go? Well, with the right amount of base notes, remember I mentioned the notes, so it has Lang Lang and Vetifer as base notes, helps to stabilize the aroma. But Vetifer also helps to encourage focus. So that's a little formula for you and also why you put certain essential oils in and why you have certain quantities so you don't overwhelm the aroma. Now for gemstone essences, so in this section, I go into detail for each one of these specific essences to give you what stones you can use to put into a jar with water and to create a vibrational essence. Now, these gemstone essences are not for um, uh, taking into your body in any way. Do not drink the rocks. Do not drink the water from the rocks. If you saw what the water looks like in some of my gemstone essence jars, uh, you would understand it because it, they, these, these gemstones have, you know, real chemicals in them. They're minerals and they actually will um, make certain kind of, what's the word I want to, to like, um, they'll seep out the, the chemicals. What is the word? Leach out. Thank you. Tatiana just came in the room. Yay, Tatiana. So here we go. Here is the an, an example of a gemstone essence. Everything's cool out there? So um, here's the develop your intuition essence. Appendix C, this is in. And notice the little jar. I actually found a jar and put a whole bunch of little gemstones in there for you. So um, I, I have it associated with uh, Archangels uh, because that's how I am. So to develop your intuition, you can invoke Archangel Gabriel for inspiration, psychic messages, and dream symbol interpretation. Um, so this is the develop your intuition uh, essence. So you get a jar, like a ball jar, or even if you are a person that saves, you know, peanut butter jars, whatever, it doesn't have to be a fancy thing. And you fill it with tap water, but if you want to use some other kind of water, that's fine too, as long as it's clean water. And uh, you put the amethyst in to promote dreaming and psychic messages that come through dreams. Angelite to help you with communication, to hear and connect with angels and archangels and master teachers. The clear quartz is for mental clarity and focus. The moonstone is for a greater perspective and to amplify receptivity and awareness of life cycles. So that's that's a good one because the moonstone is very good for intuition. Selenite increases your connection with higher consciousness and, and spirit guides. And so would like to improve and encourage meditation, contemplation, and prayer. Because to develop our intuition, we really do need to spend time in contemplative thought and meditative um, experiences and prayer is so powerful and of course for each one of these gemstone essences i have an affirmation that you can infuse or intend into the water with all these gemstones i am extremely intuitive i receive divine messages all the time it's easy for me to interpret messages and guidance that i receive i am profoundly clairvoyant but maybe you're also profoundly clairaudient. I'm quite clairaudient. You can be so many different aspects of intuition. So uh, now we're on Appendix D. And here I did an easy reference to how to find the archangels and ascendant masters, which astrological signs, the asteroids and planets, careers and professions, chakras, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual uses, and even totems, animal totems. And so here's an example of what that looks like. So the easy reference guides, and we're going to do this part a little bit faster because this is just as an example. But let's like, say you wanted to say, you know, I'm really connected with Mary Magdalene. I want to look up what essential oil would be best if I want to connect with her more deeply and more profoundly. It would be myrrh and spikenard. Or perhaps you uh, want to connect with uh, Melchizedek. Bergamo is a good one for him. 
etc. And that's this is just a snippet. I, it's much longer than this, so just so you know. Uh, uh, easy reference for careers and professions. So I even developed a, a deck of cards called um, Gemstone Guardians and Your Soul Purpose. So that has to do with the professions and careers. Um, and this is here, you see there that I have an example. If you're um, a gardener, which I am, uh, some essential oils that would be um, aligned with a gardener vibrationally, coriander, juniper berry, patchouli, pine, and vetiver. And again, that's what, this is just a little tiny snippet out of a long list of um, careers and professions. And then I also have it for the chakras. And I just did two chakras here, but you can see there's a lot of different essential oils for each chakra that you can actually use and work with. And then the, now I broke it down so you could look it up by physical uses. Now the re, physical uses, mental and emotional uses, as well as spiritual. Now again, these are little snippets, just little sections out of each one. I did this because when I was learning as an aromatherapist, I would have four different aromatherapy books. I think it was four, it might've been five, but at least four. And I would be like looking through this one, looking through that one, Let me, how can I find it in here? Where can I find it in there? Well, if I think it's important to be able to find things on your finger, you know, really pretty quickly. So if you can go alphabetical into physical uses and say, what are some good essential oils if I'm having uh, as, asthma attacks or having asthmatic conditions, then you could go look it up and see that right there. So notice that frankincense and sweet marjoram are italicized. That's because those are the two that are gonna be the most effective. In fact, frankincense is really powerful if you ever have an asthmatic type of, of a reaction. It could even be a bronchitis type of thing too. Now on a mental and emotional uses, let's say you, you really wanna have a higher confidence. You wanna have more self-confidence. So notice the ones that are italicized are bergamot, orange, palmarosa, oh, lemon is in there, petit grain or petit grain, and rosewood. And so, um, you know, any of those, and notice a lot of those are citrus, because citrus is very uplifting and helps with confidence. Then a spiritual level, um, the, I just took one item. So on a spiritual level, uh, the I grab the animal, uh, angel communication one. And you can see that in this section, <laughs> um, grapefruit, uh, chamomile, grapefruit, jasmine, etc. like I have a list for you. And that way you can have some choices and you know what you could use and work with. Now uh, for animal totems, and I did throw a cop the pictures of my books here on animal totems in the gemstone kingdom and animal allies and gemstone guardians cards because, you know, every time I write a book, another book and deck is evolving in my consciousness. And so as I was writing Essential Guide to Aromatherapy and Vibrational Healing, I didn't necessarily like intend to write another book in that regard, but all my books had different uh, references to that. And there's nothing on aromatherapy, no aromatherapy in, the, in these two books on animals, but it's part of understanding the vibrational essence of that we're all, we have, all things have a vibrational essence and they do relate with each other. So um, for example, here I have a uh, butterfly, aniseed, melissa, and peppermint. And those are plants that also most likely would attract butterflies anyway. So there's a whole section. And again, this is again, a little snippet. This is just gets up to C clam. And notice I put oregano, that's the Italian in me. <laughs> and now this glossary, this was intense. So I have, um, I didn't, I, I had to learn this myself in order to write this. So the glossary of therapeutic qualities and associated oils. So there are terms in the world of aromatherapy that I wasn't that familiar with, nor could I even pronounce it, <laughs> seriously. But I will, I'm being honest with you. So here, let's, I'm gonna use one that I can read, which is abrasions. <laughs> which the word abrasion is protects and reduces bleeding. So that's, and then to see astringent also as another option. And then those 
all these essential oils are good for abrasions. Well, that's it for tonight. That's uh, There's so much more, but we, I would never fit it in a half an hour. And it is exactly a half an hour. So I want to thank you so much for joining me, for watching, and mention, you know how I just mentioned that new things evolve right out of me writing books? Well, now I have a new deck coming out. Many of you already know that all the essential oils and gemstone guardians cards and i made it bigger on the screen so you would notice that it is available for pre-order at barnes and noble and amazon and um, that's coming out november 2022 i think its birthday is actually 11 22 22 which i think is very nice very very beneficial so i hope that has helped you in some way and that you learned something you didn't already know I want to thank you again for watching and listening, and um, may your days be filled with blessings and love, and may the angels light your path.